G'day folks, welcome to my channel. In this video, I wanna talk about the subject of apostles. Are there still apostles in the church today? Well, to answer that question, we kind of need to understand the different ways in which the word apostle is used in the New Testament. Once we understand that, then we're in a better position to understand whether or not there are still apostles in the church today. So let's get right into it. The first passage that I want to look at is Hebrews chapter 3 verses 1 to 2 because in this passage the Bible tells us that Jesus himself is an apostle. Let me read it to you. Hebrews chapter 3 verses 1 to 2 it says, Therefore holy brothers, partakers of a holy calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Jesus, who was faithful to him who appointed him as Moses also was in all his house. So the word apostle is applied to Jesus Christ himself in the New Testament. Jesus Christ is the apostle of our confession. The word apostle is also uniquely applied to the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ. Of course, Judas was replaced by Matthias, but the word is applied uniquely to the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ because they are the authoritative witnesses of the life, ministry, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. If we go to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 1 verse 21 to 22, we read this, Therefore it is necessary that of the men who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning with the baptism of John until the day he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So 12 of Jesus' disciples are uniquely designated as apostles because they are authoritative witnesses of the life, ministry, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They are also unique in other ways. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 19 verse 28 we read this, And Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you that you who have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious throne, you also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. In Revelation 21 verse 14, as the book of Revelation is describing the new Jerusalem, it says this, And the wall of the city had twelve foundation stones, and on them were the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. So these twelve disciples of Jesus that are designated as apostles are the unique authoritative witnesses of the life ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus. They are also uniquely the foundation stones of the New Jerusalem, which is the church. The apostles are also the only ones to whom Jesus said that the Holy Spirit would remind them of everything that Jesus had spoken to them. They are uniquely authoritative in that way. What about the apostle Paul? The Apostle Paul insisted that he was in no way inferior to the 12 apostles. Let me read to you a few verses. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 5, it says this, For I consider myself in no way inferior to the most eminent apostles. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11, the Apostle Paul says this, I have become foolish, you yourselves compelled me, for I ought to have been commended by you, for in no respect was I inferior to the most eminent apostles, even if I am nothing. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 7 to 10, the Apostle Paul tells us this, But on the contrary, seeing that I had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised, just as Peter had been to the circumcised, for he who worked in Peter unto his apostleship to the circumcised worked in me also unto the Gentiles. And recognizing the grace that had been given to me, James and Cephas and John, who were reputed to be pillars, gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, so that we might go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. Only they asked us to remember the poor, the very thing I was eager to do. So the Apostle Paul was in no way inferior to the other 12 apostles. He was of equal status to the 12 apostles. But there are a number of other people in the New Testament that are specifically said to be apostles other than Paul and other than the 12 apostles, the 12 disciples of Jesus. But before we look at those passages, I want us to understand the very basic meaning of the word Apostle. The word apostle simply means somebody who is sent, somebody who is sent. 
So for example, if you go to John chapter 13, verse 16, we can see the word apostle is used simply uh, as meaning one who is sent. So uh, John chapter 13, verse 16, it says this, Truly, truly, I say to you, a slave is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. Now the words translated he who is sent, those words come from one Greek word and it's the word apostle. So the word apostle simply means one who is sent. For example, Epaphroditus was sent by the Philippian church. In uh, Philippians chapter 2, he is called an apostle because he was sent by the Philippian church to bring a financial gift to help the apostle Paul when he was in prison. He needed food, he needed care, and they sent a monetary gift. And Epaphroditus was called an apostle in that passage. Now, I want to argue that all of the other people in the New Testament that are called apostles are actually missionaries who have been sent out to preach the gospel where it hasn't yet been preached. That is the way in which the word apostle is used to apply to people other than the 12 and other than the apostle Paul. If we go, for example, to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 13, we read in verses 1 to 3, that the Holy Spirit told the believers in Antioch to set aside Paul and Barnabas to preach the gospel, to go out into the world and to preach the gospel. And then in Acts chapter 14, verses 1 to 4, we read this. Here we see very clearly that both Paul and Barnabas are called apostles. Let me read it to you. Acts chapter 14, verses 1 to 4, it says this. Now it happened that in Iconium they entered the synagogue of the Jews together and spoke in such a manner that a large number of people believed, both of Jews and of Greeks. But the unbelieving Jews instigated and embittered the minds of the Gentiles against the brothers. Therefore they spent a long time there speaking boldly with reliance upon the Lord, who was testifying to the word of his grace, granting that signs and wonders be done through their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, and some sided with the Jews and some with the apostles. You can see quite clearly here that apostles is in the plural. Some people sided with the apostles in the plural. And the only other person here that was with the apostle Paul was Barnabas. Now it gets even clearer as you go down and read verses 12 to 15. Let me read this. It specifically says that Barnabas is an apostle. Let me read this to you. And they began calling Barnabas Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. And the priests of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates and was waiting to offer sacrifices with the crowds. But when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of it, they tore their garments and rushed out into the crowd, crying out and saying, Men, why are you doing these things? We are also men of the same nature as you, proclaiming the gospel to you, that you should turn from these vain things to a living God who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. You can see here that Luke, the author of Acts, specifically calls both Paul and Barnabas apostles. So it's very clear that Barnabas was in fact an apostle, yet he's not one of the twelve, and of course he's not the apostle Paul himself. Another passage of scripture makes it very clear that um, not only Paul, but Silas, sometimes translated as Silvanus, and Timothy are also apostles. They were also apostles. If you look at the very beginning of the book of 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Paul and Silvanus, or Silas, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. Notice here that the epistle to the Thessalonians was from Paul and Silvanus and Timothy. Very clear there. And it's interesting that on the original trip in the book of Acts to Thessalonica, all three of those persons were present. Now have a look in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 5 to 7. So this is uh, uh, the next chapter, uh, verses 5 to 7. It says this, let me read this to you. For we never came with a flattering word, as you know, nor with a pretext for greed. God is witness, nor seeking glory from men, either from you or from others. Even though as apostles of Christ, we could have been a burden to you, but we proved to be gentle among you as a nursing mother tenderly cares for her own children. So you can see quite clearly here that the Apostle Paul is not just referring to himself as an apostle, 
But he's also referring to the others who are writing this epistle to the Thessalonians. He's saying, us, we could have been a burden to you as apostles of Christ, but we prove to be gentle among you, etc. So clearly the Apostle Paul refers to himself, also to Silas and to Timothy as apostles. And that's because they were missionaries. Now, there is one other time that the word apostle is applied to somebody that kind of throws a bit of a spanner in the works. And that is Galatians chapter 1, verse 19, where it appears to say that James, the brother of Jesus, is in fact an apostle. Let me read it to you. James chapter 1, verse 19. It says this. This is the apostle Paul speaking. He says, But I did not see any other of the apostles except James, the Lord's brother. So Paul seems to be suggesting here in Galatians chapter 1 verse 19 that James the brother of Jesus was an apostle. Now this is very interesting because as we'll see in a moment James was not one of the 12 apostles. He was not one of the 12 disciples that were appointed to be apostles. But in addition to that James was not a missionary either. Uh, James was one of the leaders or the leader of the Jerusalem church and history tells us that he died in Jerusalem. So he wasn't one of the uh, 12 apostles and he wasn't a missionary. So how do we explain this passage that seems to be suggesting uh, that uh, James, the brother of Jesus, was an apostle? Well, there's a couple of ways people try to explain it. Some people try to say that uh, Paul is not saying that James was an apostle, but rather he mentions him because he was one of the pillars of the church and he was obviously there in Jerusalem when Paul went there. Robert Gundry in his commentary, he, he says this, let me read it to you. Paul did see James, but doesn't make clear whether James was an exception among the apostles or an exception separate from the apostles. So one interpretation is to say that uh, Paul in Galatians chapter 1 verse 19 is not saying that James is an apostle, but that he was an exception separate to the apostles. That's one possible interpretation. I am not convinced of that personally, but it is a possible interpretation. Another interpretation that some people have put forward is that uh, James, the brother of Jesus, was actually one of the 12, one of the original 12 apostles, one of the original 12 disciples of Jesus. Um, I think that that is wrong for a number of reasons. First of all, uh, John chapter 7 verse 5 tells us very clearly that Jesus' brothers did not believe in him. And uh, it's really only after the resurrection when Jesus appeared to James that James actually believed in Jesus. So for that alone, I would reject the idea that uh, James, the brother of Jesus, was one of the original 12. Secondly, um, J the two Jameses have father's names mentioned. Uh, one of them is James, the brother of John, who's, uh, who was the son of Zebedee. And the other one is James, the son of Alphaeus. Now, James, the brother of Jesus, would have been the son of Joseph. So that doesn't really make much sense to me either. Now, some people have come along and they've tried to say, well, maybe um, these were um, children uh, of that. James was like a half brother. Obviously, he was a half brother, even with Joseph. But um, that uh, Mary had another husband after Joseph died. The problem with that argument is that uh, Jesus on the cross gave the responsibility of looking after Mary to uh, John, his disciple John, which means that this second husband would have died as well. Now that seems pretty unlikely to me because Mary was a very blessed woman and to say that she had two husbands that both died in her lifetime to me would make her a very, um, I don't know, the opposite of blessed. <laughs> you know, it doesn't seem quite right to me. Another argument that people have put forward was that um, these are Joseph's children before he married um, Mary. The problem with that as well is that when you read the nativity story in Matthew, it seems as though it's the two of them in Jesus. Um, and to say that he's got four extra brothers and two sisters at that time just would seem very unlikely to me as well. So for, for those reasons, I would reject that second interpretation. A third interpretation, and I guess I'm somewhere kind of caught in the middle of the first and the third interpretations is that when James, the son of Zebedee, was killed, was martyred in the book of Acts early on, that the other 11 disciples appointed James, the brother of Jesus, to take his place, to fill the spot so that there would be 12 apostles. 
I think that's a possible interpretation and I would say I would probably hold to either the first one, um, that is um, it's a, a, an exception separate to the apostles and Paul is not really saying that James is an apostle or that James was an apostle, uh, but he was appointed by the other 11 to take the place of James, the son of Zebedee. So I think, and there's one more passage, I think that uses the word apostle and um, it talks about a woman uh, being of note among the apostles. But I think when you look at that grammatically, uh, an easy interpretation can simply be that she's not an apostle, but rather she's of note among the apostles. The apostles know who she is and they think highly of her. So that's, that's a, the final passage. So in conclusion, we can see that Jesus Christ himself is an apostle. We can see that Jesus had 12 disciples, which he uh, appointed to be 12 apostles. Of course, Judas was replaced with Matthias. We see that the apostle Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles of equal status to the other 12. And then we can see that there were other apostles who were missionaries. And that's very different to somebody, say, in America who's claiming to be an apostle or somebody in a, a kind of a Christian African country claiming to be an apostle. Very different to that. These apostles were people that were preaching the gospel where it had not been heard before. They were going out with the message of Christ, spreading the gospel as missionaries, bringing the gospel to people who had never heard the gospel before. So are there apostles today? Obviously, Jesus is an apostle. The 12 apostles are in heaven with Jesus as well. They're no longer here. Paul is gone. But can we say missionaries today are apostles? I would say yes. Missionaries today can be referred to as apostles. We don't really use that term, but I would say yes, they are apostles, but they don't have the same authority as Paul and the other 12. And of course, they don't have the same authority as Jesus. So are there apostles today? Yes and no. Uh, yes, there are uh, missionaries around, but no, there are no more apostles like the 12 that have that kind of authority. I hope you've liked this video. If you have, please consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up. Hit the bell notification button. I'll see you in the comments section and you'll see me in my next video.